everybody, this is Dr. Robert Berger and uh, today we're going to be continuing to talk about the gastrointestinal system, uh, some of the problems that occur and some of the physiology of the gastrointestinal system and where these uh, organs and these glands are situated so you'll have a better idea of when we talk about them where they are actually located because many times people really don't know that and it's important because uh, some of the uh, symptoms, some of the diseases, you'll see why these things occur when you look at the physiology. Now, what, the first thing, of course, we're talking when you take in food from the mouth, it goes right into the esophagus. And the esophagus is about anywhere between 10 to 12 inches uh, long, on an average person. And, of course, the, the end of the esophagus, the bottom of the esophagus, is where you've got the attachment to the upper part of the stomach and that's called the esophageal gastric uh, uh, valve or the gastric esophageal valve. Many, there's many names for it, but that's the one, that's the sphincter right there that causes the problems with reflux because look at what's happening. You've got food coming down the esophagus. Now remember the esophagus is supposed to be uh, you know, a certain type of epithelial tissue on the outside. It's very, very susceptible to burning or any type of type, a low pH and then you go right into that part of the stomach, the very top of the stomach right there is where the, the probably the highest pH, uh, the lowest pH is because you're starting to digest the food and you're going to get circular movements between those areas in the stomach. Now if you look at the stomach by itself, by the way, the, re the, it, the roundest part of the stomach is basically the body of the corpus of the stomach and the upper part is called the fundus. And those are the areas that are basically concerned with those circular peristaltic movements that you always hear about, that circular. They, they literally take the food and they circulate. And what happens is inside of that is also something called chyme or chyme, which is basically gastric secretions that mix in with the food so it can start to digest it. But you remember the pH, and you know, remember it's like, a, if you think, picture a hurricane like this and picture a very low pH pushing up into the esophagus. Now there's the problem. If that valve doesn't shut, what do you have there? You've got a lot of pressure in the stomach pushing that low pH chyme into the esophagus, usually the first three or four centimeters, but of course we know many people it goes all the way up into the throat. Very, very dangerous in many cases and very uncomfortable. And we talk about heartburn, that's your, basically your heartburn, but it's much more dangerous than just heartburn. Because when you start getting that type of situation going, where you're getting that very, very low pH, that burning acid. Because remember, what you're talking about in the stomach, we talked about hydrochloric acids there. Going up into the esophagus, you're burning the tissues of the esophagus. What do we talk about when you irritate tissues of the esophagus? You can actually cause this, these cells to start to mutate eventually, which we'll go into in later uh, later shelves, of course. Now, let's take it from the stomach. Let's just say that valve closes, and now it needs to get into the uh, duodenum, which is the upper part of the small intestine. So, as you you know, as you take this food or this chyme, it goes around, and the bottom of the stomach is called the antrum. And the antrum that's important to know because the antrum is probably most susceptible to very low pH because in the antrum there's many glands there that are going to be very important, you're going to hear about, that produce mucin and produce things that are going to protect not only the stomach, but the rest of the body. So let's take that, and let's take that food, it goes through the esophag pyloric esophageal sphincter there. Another problem is where the pyloric esophageal sphincter doesn't close or doesn't open correctly, in other words, doesn't relax, and so you either end up with obviously a lot of burning in that area or once again uh, the esophagus many times is you're not getting the proper flow of food or the kind going into the from the esophagus to the stomach now into the duodenum so there's a real problem if there is a problem with any of those valves and of course this is the major problem in this country and many countries with the heartburn and with different types of gastrointestinal problems and when you look at the physiology you can kind of see what's really going on there and of course on the next uh, installment we're going to talk more about you know where we're going the, the duodenum which is the upper part of the 
the, you know, the uh, small intestine into the jejunum, into the ileum, which is you know, where you do most of your digestion. So we're going to get into that next. And uh, until next time, this is Dr. Robert Berger, and everybody have a great day.